when two forces F1 and F2 acting on a point, uh, if F1 and F2 act in the same direction, uh, the maximum resultant has a magnitude of 13 newtons. Uh, what are we saying? We're essentially saying that uh, F1 plus F2 is equals to uh, 13 newtons, right? And then the equation uh, goes on to say that uh, if F1 and F2 act in the opposite directions, uh, the magnitude of the minimum resultant is 3 newton, right? Uh, so let's say, for instance, F2 is greater than F1, uh, then we're going to have something like uh, F2 minus F1 uh, being equals to uh, 3 newtons. Uh, that's what essentially uh, we get in from the statement. And then uh, the question now says that uh, the magnitude of the two forces in Newton is, right? So right now we know that uh, our first criteria, F1 plus F2 should be equals to uh, 13 Newtons. So let's go and look for two forces uh, that can give us that before we look at the second option. So obviously here, if you look at A, we have 8 and 5, right? And we know fully well that 8 plus 5 is equals to 13 Newtons. So A uh, satisfy our first condition and then B 16 and 10 uh, that cannot be true. And then for C, we have 3 and 10, which is also equals to 13, right? And then D, we have 10 and 7, which is definitely not true. So now we're just looking at A and C uh, to find our answer, right? So let's look at our second criteria. We need F2 minus F1 to be equals to 13 Newtons. So you can see for option A, uh, if you say 8, uh, minus 5, you're going to get uh, 3 Newtons. And then if you say 5 minus 8, you're going to get uh, minus 3 Newtons, right? We are only interested in the magnitude. So 8 and 5 clearly works. So our answer for 1.1 1 .1, uh, is going to be A. But let's also look at C and see if we can uh, satisfy our equation. Uh, so for C, we have uh, 3 and 10, right? Uh, clearly, 10 minus 3 is equals to uh, 7 newtons and 3 minus 10 will be equals to uh, minus 7. So only A satisfy our conditions. Now we can look at 1.2. Uh, 1.2 says that a free moving block slides down an inclined plane at a constant velocity. This means that then, before I even look at my uh, options, with my eyes closed i know fully well that if we are moving at constant velocity right so what is the uh, consequence of constant velocity uh, the consequence of constant velocity is that acceleration is zero right but then what is the consequence of an acceleration when it goes to zero uh, f net is equal to ma so if acceleration is equal to zero, then F net is equal to zero, right? Now I can look at my options, right? A says that uh, the frictional force acting on the block is zero, right? There's no way we can tell with the information we have. That can be true, that cannot be true. We're not sure, right? And then for B, it says that uh, the net force acting on the block is in the direction down the slope of the plane. Uh, the net force acting on the block is in the direction if f net is equal to zero we cannot really talk about the direction of that net force and then for c it says that uh, the net force acting on the block is zero and then uh, like we have already stated if the acceleration is zero the f net is going to be zero so our answer for 1.2 is going to be um, option c now let's look at 1.3. Uh, 1.3 says that a trolley is pushed along a horizontal surface with a force of 150 newtons at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. The trolley experiences a constant frictional force of 60 newtons. And then our diagram uh, clearly demonstrates that. And then we have a few options there, uh, one, two, three, right? Before the multiple choice itself. Uh, so they're saying that uh, the net force acting on the trolley causes the trolley to accelerate horizontally, right? Along the x-axis. Uh, that is that is true. Uh, let me show you why I'm saying it's true. Uh, we know that 
uh, Fnet will be equals to force applied along the X plus uh, the frictional force, right? Uh, that's in the horizontal. So F applied along the X, that will be 150 multiplied by cos of 45 and then minus 60 degrees oh not 60 degrees but uh 60 neutrons uh from the frictional force so what is 150 multiplied by cos of 45 uh that is 106.06 .06, uh minus 60 right uh so clearly uh f net here is uh not zero is greater than zero so we're going to be accelerating um along the horizontal right so our first option i uh is correct right let's look at uh, the second option so we're saying that this option is correct uh, the second option is saying that the net force is equals to uh the applied force uh that is not true right uh the net force is going to be one of six minus c g uh which is going to be uh forty six point uh zero six uh somewhere there right so our second uh, point is not true. Let's look at the third one. Uh, so we say in this here it's not true. Uh, the net force acting on the trolley is horizontally forward. That is that is true, right? Uh, because uh, it's positive. Uh, we're moving in in the right direction. So here our options. Um, so we say in the first one and the third one are true, right? And that seems to be option C, right? So for one point three. Uh, we are going with uh, option C. So that's our answer for 1.3. Now let's go to 1.4. So 1.4 here is saying that a man in lift is moving upwards at a constant speed. The weight of the um, uh, man is W according uh, to Newton's third law. The reaction force of the weight is the force of so what you have to think of now is why do we even experience weight right uh we just know that uh, there's an equation uh, w is equals to m multiplied by g but then do you ever think about where this equation is coming from uh, because we know for the world that if we're looking for g the acceleration right that will be uh, the capital letter g uh, and then the mass uh, divided by r squared right so if we substitute that into w you will realize that we have g uh, mass one mass two divided by r squared right so this is uh, the force between two bodies attracting each other so we experience the weight because we are also exacting a force on the earth right so uh, the reaction force of weight is the force of the man on the earth and the reaction force of the man on the earth is the weight right so our answer for 1.4 will therefore uh, be option d right uh, the reaction force of the weight is the man on the earth the reaction force of the man on the earth is uh, the weight right and then let's do 1.6 1.6 is saying 1.5 i meant so 1.5 is saying uh, the optical density of a medium um and then dot 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 so before we go any further let's talk about uh, the word optical density so what are we talking about we're talking about optical uh density right so optical density is directly proportional to refractive index right uh the higher uh, the optical density of an of a medium uh, the higher the refractive index of that medium so let's look at our option here uh, the optical density of a medium will be high if the refraction of light is less right uh, that is clearly not true because we see in that the optical density is directly proportional uh, to the refractive index of a medium so a is incorrect now let's look at b b is saying that uh, the optical density of a medium is a measure of the refractive power of the medium right and that's exactly what i've been proposing so for 1.5 
uh, we go in with option B. Uh, the optical density of a medium is a measure of the refractive power of that medium, right? And as a consequence, the higher the optical density, the higher the refractive index of that medium. And let's do 1.6. 1.6 says that uh, in which one of the following graphs below will the gradient represent the refractive index of a material when light passes from air through the material? So obviously, I'm not going to guess, right? Uh, we have graphs, so we need an equation, right? Uh, so we have light passing from one medium to another. So like we always do in this situation, we're going to need uh, Snell's law. So what are we saying? Uh, we're saying that uh, we're going from A uh, to some uh, medium, right? To some material that uh, we don't really know. So if we use Snell's law, we're going to get uh, Ni sine uh, theta i being equals to Nr sine uh, theta r so we're going from a to some medium uh, we know fully well that uh, the refractive index of a is one so if we substitute that we're going to get one multiplied by sine of uh, theta i being equals to n r sine of theta r anything multiplied by one is just that thing right so we're going to get uh, sine theta i being equals to nr sine of theta r right and then you should be able to see here that uh, we have y uh, is equals to m and then uh, this becomes our x plus c but then in this situation uh, c is zero right uh, so the gradient here is going to be uh, the refractive index of the material, right? And then sine theta i is going to be on the y-axis and sine theta r is going to be on the x-axis, right? And then if you look at our graphs here, uh, that is option uh, D. Uh, so 1.7 is saying that every point on a wave front acts as a point source of spherical secondary waves that move forward at the same speed as the wave. Uh, this statement uh, represents, and then we have uh, Snell's law. Uh, that is not Snell's law, obviously. And then for B, we have uh, Huygens' principle, right? And that's definitely uh, what the definition says. So our answer for 1.7 uh, is B. Uh, just look up, uh, you know, uh, the definition and the principle accompanying it, and uh, you will realize that the answer for 1.7 is B. And then uh, for 1.8, uh, this is an interesting one, right? It's really easy, but yeah, it's interesting. Uh, saying that uh, three charges of magnitude plus 2Q, uh, plus 2Q and minus 2Q are shown in the sketch below, right? Uh, which arrow currently represents the direction of the net force acting on the minus 2Q charge? So let's pay our attention to the minus 2Q charge, right? So here it is. Uh, clearly, it is negative, right? And then here we have plus 2Q. So how does the positive charge interact with the negative charge. They attract each other, right? So the plus 2Q charge will be uh, pulling the minus 2Q charge upwards, right? And then here we have minus 2Q and plus 2Q. So this one will be pulling it to the right because they are attracting each other, right? So you should see now that uh, the resultant uh, net force, right, uh, will be somewhere there, right? And then which option is that? Uh, that is option A, right? And then now we can move forward and go to uh, where we're going. We can move forward and go to uh, 1.9. So we have 1.9. Uh, 1.9 is saying which one of the sketches below represents the correct magnetic field pattern around a straight current carrying conductor right so you should see that uh you probably haven't seen anything like c before and that is not true and d is also not true right uh the answer for 1.9 is actually b 
right uh why am i saying the answer for 1.9 it's b we're using a hand roll and because of the format of the video uh there's no way i can show you that right uh, but then in the description of the video i uh, will put a link uh, to a resource that can uh, help you understand this concept better and uh 1.10 1.10 says uh which of the following graphs uh, below correctly represents the relationship between potential difference and current in a non-ohmic resistor? So if the question was saying in an ohmic resistor, then the answer would be A, obviously, right? And then um, B, uh, B, there's no way the voltage can be uh, increasing and the current is going down, right? See, it looks like an ohmic resistor, uh, but then you can see that uh, instead of being a straight line, it's uh, sort of, you know, uh, it's exponential, right? And then that's exactly uh, what the graph of a non-ohmic resistor looks like. So our answer here for 1.10 is going to be C.